Hey everyone, Anders here with another Black Desert video. Today we are going to go over the update preview in Global Labs, a lot of class balance, and some improvements to Marnie's private room. Let's start with Succession Warrior. Prime Evasion has a new input, Shift A or D will activate the skill. You can now also fast cast Counter, Severing Thrust, Spinning Slash, and Deep Thrust after using Prime Evasion. Your block in Succession has also been improved. Whenever you get hit, you used to get a 5 DP bonus up to 10 times, so a total of 50 DP but you needed to get hit 10 times. Now the DP bonus is 10 DP every time you get hit up to 5 times, so the 50 DP cap stays the same, but you get that DP bonus faster and with less hits taken. Chopping Kick can be used after Prime Solar Flare and Prime Heavy Strike, so better animation cancels. Prime Scars of Dusk now has a faster animation link after using the Prime Solar Flare skill. Shield Strike can now be used from the Quick Slot. Prime Earth Tremor can now be used with a Shift F input when Ground Smash is on cool cooldown, Succession Warcry loses that AP buff it had, and Prime Scars of Dusk now gains a 10 AP buff for 10 seconds on use. Prime Scars of Dusk in turn loses its DP buff. These are decent changes for Succession Warrior, mostly focusing on giving more options rather than straight damage. But moving on to Awakening Sorceress, Darkness Released no longer has a down smash effect. This also affects Succession, though it doesn't seem to be applying on test server at the moment. Shards of Darkness now recovers more mana per shard from 60 to 150 per shard. Again, this will also benefit Succession. GRJ or Grim Reaper now deals 15% more damage in PvE on normal hits, 10% less damage in PvP on normal hits, 10% more damage in PvE for charged hits, 14% less in PvP for charged hits. Cardian's Nightmare can now be cancelled with the S input and can now have an additional hit be activated by using the E input. You can consume shards to increase the movement distance when moving left or right. The skill cooldown has been reduced to 18 seconds and now all damage will be equal no matter the range of the target hit. Casting speed also has been increased and damage has been increased by 10% in PvE with even more true damage thanks to the 100% PvE crit rate on additional hits and damage has been lowered by 45% in PvP. Flow Requiem crit rate buff now applies at the end of the skill animation which is very good. Violation has been changed to use shards and advance once more by using the WRMB input instead of LMB RMB. Dead Hunt now deals 11% more damage in PvE. PvP damage remains the same. Moving on to Succession Mewa, Red Blooming PvP damage has been reduced by 19%. Prime Charge Stub Arrow PvP damage was also reduced by 26%. The mana reduction on hit effect of Blooming has been reduced to 10 per hit instead of 50. This is also the same for Moose's Blooming skill and Ranger's Rushing Wind skill that had their mana reduction completely removed. Seems like only nerfs from Mewa this time around. Let me know your thoughts. Moving on to Succession Striker, Flash Stub can now be linked with Roaring Tiger and Heart and Soul. It can also be linked with the second hit of Stalking Wolf by using the WF input after using Flash Step. Prime's Wolf Fang attack range is now the same as the non-Prime version. Flow Mass Destruction now lets you move right and left without attacking by using the same inputs of Mass Destruction. Prime Wolf's Hunger second and third hit now activate by using the F input. Somersault and Rising Blast combo animations have been changed. Somersault will now consume mana instead of stamina. Rising Blast now consumes more stamina and has super armor. Evasion debuff on hits has been reduced to 9% instead of 12% on the first hit. The energy release effect is now added to the second hit of Rising Blast. Tabak Kick will no longer have animation slowdown on good hits. It can now link with Prime Skull Crusher more smoothly. It can now link with Prime Rampaging Predator skill more smoothly as well. And it can now link with the second hit of the Hurricane skill. Hurricane no longer has a 3 hit motion and will now link with the Heart and Soul and some Somersault skills. Striker and Mystic have both improved PvE iframe duration on their Flash Step, Silent Step, and Double Flash skills. Moving on to Succession Lawn, Stately Dignity no longer has the attack speed buff on the skill. Instead, that effect has been moved to the Prime Pendulum Cleaver skill and Flailing Blades in Awakening. The result is that Pendulum Cleaver will have an 18% attack speed buff instead of 15%, and Flailing Blade will have an 18% attack speed buff instead of 15% for Awakening. Salpuri Purge, both Prime and Absolute. Absolute now have an increased DP debuff of 20 instead of 15. Prime Bleeding Hearts can now link with the second hit of Fatal Attraction and its input has been changed to C. Prime Pendulum Kick now deals 
12% more damage in PvE, same damage in PvP. Prime Blade Dance now deals 16% more damage in PvE, same damage in PvP. Prime Symbidium now deals 20% more damage in PvE only, and Prime Crescent Barrage now deals 20% more damage in PvE only. Moving on to Awakening Sage, Enlightening Bolt no longer has a first hit motion, and it will now link with the Radiant Annihilation, and the base damage of the skill has increased by 10% in both PvE and PvP, and it now has a base 30% crit rate in both PvE and PvP. Spearbolt Javelin Throw Speed has changed, Divine Executioner Cooldown has been reduced to 14 seconds from 17 seconds, Flow Judgment Cooldown has been reduced to 10 seconds from 17 seconds. Aftershock can now be activated even if there is no target in front, Lightning Prison now deals 13% more damage in PvE and 16% more damage in PvP. BSR Flow Interrogate now links with other skills and animation speed has changed. Lightning Surge now has a 30% crit rate buff for 5 seconds, Impaling Flash animation has been changed, it will no longer target multiple enemies and instead rush one enemy. The protection of the skill has also changed to be an iframe into super armor and can now be linked with other skills. That was the Awakening Sage changes, a lot of good changes, but let me know your thoughts as always in the comments. Now moving on to Awakening Wusa, Nether Blast no longer has a down smash and instead gains a knockdown CC and gains the Sorry Flower Summon from the Bloom skill. Life Lure now has a forward guard but the Sorry Flower damage has been reduced by 10%. Perilous Waltz now has faster animation backwards and can now link faster with more skills. Sorry Flower Summons will now appear at longer ranges when using the range summon skills and Chain Fleeting Step has a different animation when using it backwards in Awakening. Few but good changes for Wusa. Moving on to the Awakening Megu. Three new BSR skills have been added. Twirling Rhapsody is a 10% BSR that deals four more hits of damage. The base skill now has an air attack, links with Spirit Step more smoothly, and now only does a floating CC on the first hit, which is a nerf. Twirling Retreat is a 25% BSR that gains six more hits of damage, down attack, down smash, and an evasion debuff for 20 seconds. Really strong BSR effect for the cost. Ember Claw Crush is a 50% BSR that gains one hit of damage and super armor. Megu has gained an Elvia skill as well for use in Elvia channels. Fox Flare Charge now rotates according to the camera movement, and Fan Kick base animation is the same speed as when empowered, and an additional air attack damage buff of 10% has also been added when empowered. Damage for PvP has increased by 10%. Fox Flare Cleave now deals 10% more damage. Good changes for Awakening Megu, especially that 25% BSR looks really good. Those are all the balance changes for the patch, but we have a few more updates to talk about. First, the big change for ocean content currents have been removed. This was an ocean mechanic where different areas of the ocean would have actual sea currents that would at times impede your vessel, slowing you down massively and was more of a hindrance than anything. You eventually learned which paths to take out in the ocean to have the least amount of current resistance, but the removal is going to be a great benefit for anyone looking to get into the ocean content side of the game. Marnie's private room has been expanded to include 16 new areas. The Marnie's private room revamp is still coming. That's still in the works, so we should see it in a week or two. They are working on the server optimization for the update. The new zones that have been added for Marnie Private Room include Bashim, Desert Naga, Tidium Valley, Fadis, Gahaz Bandit, Crescent Shrine, Kadri, Trader's Gravestone, Polyforest, Prodi Cave, Centaurus, Sakraya Upper, Kratuga, Paddocks, Ash Forest, and Crypt of Resting Thoughts. Thornwood and Turo Dekia summon zones have been improved to include more precise locations, and in Thornwood, an Uber Elite will spawn after some time. It's similar to the normal elite event that we already have in that area. Thornwood Dekia and Turo Dekia will come to global servers this week. Narchillin beginner gear can now be obtained by simply reaching level 50 and finishing the Calfian story or being over level 56 on any character. Book of Margahan no longer needs the fruit of enchantment and instead can use any 10 of the same fruit which is a huge help for new players. Node Wars and Siege rewards have been improved. The total amount of taxes accumulated before occupation and the node battles have been increased by about 20 25%. For each node level, the tax acquisition rate is applied as the same as before. Node War rewards for tiers 2 to 4 have been separated. The higher the level, the more rewards you get. Conditions for participation rewards have also changed to needing 100 or more kills and deaths or destroying enemy forts. The maximum durability of forts and annexes in tier 1 to 4 node wars and conquest wards have been changed from 1.5 to 2.2 times greater than before for forts, 3.2 to 5.2 times greater than before for recovery centers, 2.8 to 4.8 times greater than before for supply stations, 1.8 times more for huachas and flame towers, 1.4 times greater for enhanced flame towers, 3 to 5 times greater for cannon, elephants, and flag buildings, and no changes for fences and barricades. You can now edit
edit your UI while on mounts and ships. And lastly, the karma change is being applied. Your karma will now be family wide instead of character specific. Let me know your thoughts on this patch in the comments. These will go live next week in Korea with most changes going through to global regions in two weeks. Reminder, support your creator event is on. Every purchase you make, you can use code ANDERS. Capitalization does not matter. And at no additional cost to you, I will get a small kickback. Always appreciated. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.